Although the Ottomans had managed to force the vassalization of Moravian Serbia during the aftermath of the Battle of Kosovo, casualties in that battle had been massive, and as a result, a power vacuum had arisen in the Balkans. With its armies in southeastern Europe severely depleted, and its former sultan slain on the battlefield, the Ottoman Empire, under its new sultan Bayezid I, was in a state of uncertainty and more vulnerable to outside invasions from its hostile neighbours in the Balkans and Anatolia than in any previous period in the country's history. Although the situation in the Balkans was slowly settling down after the climax in hostilities in Kosovo, elsewhere the steady peace that Adirna had crafted between the various Turkic Beyliks of Anatolia was slowly falling apart. In this episode on the history of the Ottoman Empire, we will cover Sultan Bayezid's conquest of Asia Minor, and the rising tensions with the Christian powers of Europe which flared up in its wake. Throughout this series we'll be mentioning Janissaries, who were elite troops of the Ottoman Empire, so we wanted to highlight a way to learn more about the lives of these picked men through our sponsor Magellan TV, the documentary streaming service that includes the Ancient Warriors series, and in particular a full episode on Janissaries. You'll learn how these men were given to the Sultan as boys as a form of tax among the non-Muslim population, non-Muslim being important since that meant it was legal for them to be considered slaves. But while slaves they might have been, the empire went through vigorous processes to improve and elevate these boys so that they would stand above the common soldier, and indeed they came to be feared in battle because the system certainly got results. To find out how all this worked, and see what made the Janissaries so fearsome, check out the Ancient Warriors series, Episode 8, on Magellan TV. Obviously there's a whole load of other stuff on Magellan TV, and it's the best place to find history documentaries on endless topics, all ad-free, with more being continually added, and 4K options included at no extra cost. All of this, including Ancient Warriors, is included in the one-month free trial, available via our link in the description, so check it out! During the reign of Murad I, the Ottoman state underwent a major transformation within its military and bureaucratic ranks, as the Timar and Divshima systems were institutionalized throughout the Sultanate's Balkan territories. With the centralizing Ottoman state relying more on its newly established Balkan political class for governance and war, the independently minded Turkic Ghazi warbands of old, who were present since the days of Osman Ghazi, began slowly losing political influence in Adirna. Many Turkic groups in Anatolia felt that the Ottoman Sultanate had become too sympathetic to the Christian elements of its Balkan holdings, and too hostile to the Islamic Ghazi traditions of old. In addition to the fratricide of the popular Shehzada Yakup and the decline in the Ottomans' ability to project power in Anatolia after their massive losses at Kosovo, the Ghazi warbands within the Sultanate and the other various Turkic beyliks of Western Anatolia began to become increasingly antsy in their desire to throw off Ottoman overlordship. Seeking to take advantage of the region's political unrest and Murat I's sudden death, during the spring of 1390, the ruler of the powerful Karamanid state, Aledin Ali Bey, would conduct a surprise invasion into Ottoman territories. He would be accompanied by the many smaller Turkic beyliks of Western Anatolia, whose allegiance regularly flip-flopped between the Ottomans and Karamanids, seeking to play the two major powers of the region off one another in order to maintain their independence. In a short period of time, the newly formed Turkic coalition would capture the Ottoman buffer towns of Akshahir and Beyshehir, in addition to Kutaya, thus sparking panic in Adirna. The new Sultan of the Ottomans did not stay idle as his domains in Anatolia were being chipped away. First obtaining a fetwa, in order to officially declare wars against fellow Muslim states, Bayezid, along with an Ottoman army made out of mostly European vassal troops and his own household troops, would cross into Anatolia with the intent of waging a lightning-fast war in the region. The Ottoman Sultan would also be accompanied by his vassal lords, the newly crowned Serbian royal Stefan Lazarevic, and the junior Byzantine co-emperors John VII and Manuel II. In a single military campaign during the summer and fall of 1390, Bayezid and his armies would conquer the Yamianid, Adinid, Metanesha and Sarakan Beyliks in quick succession, 
absorbing their significant wealth in the process. Moreover, the isolated Byzantine town of Philadelphia, the last imperial town left in Anatolia, was finally transferred to Ottoman rule after a short siege. After wintering in Ankara and resupplying his army, Bayezid resumed his Anatolian campaign the following spring, which resulted in the fall of the Hamindid and Teka Beyliks, in addition to the reconquest of the towns of Akshahir and Beyshahir from the Karamanids. After capturing large swaths of Anatolia within a short period, mainly due to the exploits of Stefan Lazarevitz and his Serbian shock cavalry, Bayezid now had a large source of manpower to call on for future military campaigns into Europe. Seeing that his Turkic coalition in western Anatolia had fallen so quickly to Bayezid, Aladin Ali Bey scrambled to find new allies, entering into an alliance with the Janderid Beylik and the former lands of the Eretnid Beylik, which was now ruled by an Islamic scholar turned sultan called Qadi Bahanuddin. However, this new alliance would prove futile, as Ottoman forces would catch the Karamanid Bey by surprise swiftly storming into his capital of Konya and capturing the city without bloodshed. Despite his decisive and crushing victories, Sultan Bayezid did not want to further antagonize the Turkoman nobles of the region with his war of conquest. To that end, he concluded a relatively lenient peace treaty with Aladin Ali Bey, in which the Karamanid ruler would submit to Ottoman vassalage and his territories reduced to the lands east of the stream of Chashamba. It was also during this period in which Bayezid, in an attempt to legalize his claim over all of Anatolia, would brandish himself as the Sultan of Rum, a title that was once held by the former Seljuk sultans of old. With the Karamanids once again submitting to Ottoman supremacy in Anatolia, Bayezid now turned his attention up north to the Janderid Beylik. In yet another lightning-fast military campaign during the summer of 1391, Ottoman forces captured the Janderid capital of Kastamonu and annexed the Beylik into the empire. After plundering the former Janderid countryside for some time, Bayezid now turned his gaze to the domains of Qadi Bahanuddin. After swiftly capturing the border towns of Amisya and Chorum during the fall of the same year, Bayezid seemed poised to complete his total conquest of Anatolia. However, after a sudden counter-offensive, led by Bahanuddin himself, culminating in the Battle of Kirktilim and the death of Bayezid's son, Shizeda Uturul, Ottoman forces withdrew back into Janderid lands in defeat. As Bayezid was making final preparations to once again invade the domains of Qadi Bahanuddin the following spring, major news from Europe had begun trickling into the Sultan's tent. With the majority of Ottoman armies preoccupied in Anatolia, King Sigismund of Hungary and the Serbian nobleman Vuk Brankovic had begun plundering the domains of Serbian ruler Stefan Lazarevic in an attempt to push back Ottoman presence in the Balkans. Meanwhile, Voivode Mircea of Wallachia had also begun a series of military operations in the region by raiding deep into Ottoman Bulgaria and conquering the vital Ottoman Danube fortress town of Silistra. The Wallachian Voivode had also conquered the northern half of the Despotate of Debruja, thus gaining access to a number of lucrative Black Sea ports in the process. In addition to these Christian incursions into the Balkans, relations between Adena and Constantinople were becoming increasingly strained, as a power struggle between the various factions of the Palaiologos dynasty erupted in the Byzantine capital city. Since the end of the previous Palaiologos civil war in 1379, the Byzantine realm was held together by an uneasy peace between the political faction of Andronikos IV and his son and co-emperor John VII, who predominantly ruled from Salimbria, and the faction of John V and his sons co-emperor Manuel II and despot Theodori I, who predominantly ruled from Constantinople and Morea. Ever since the political settlement of 1381, the mainline Byzantine succession from Constantinople was determined to be passed through John V to his eldest son Andronikos IV and then to his son John VII, thus bypassing Manuel II's claim to the throne. However, with the untimely death of Andronikos IV in 1385, the political settlement of 1381 was brought into question as the 15-year-old John VII was now alone in his bid for the Byzantine throne. Distrustful of his grandfather and uncle, 
John VII would travel to Genoa in 1389 to solicit support for his claim to the Byzantine throne. But it would be the ascension of Bayezid I the same year which would give the young Byzantine emperor an opportunity to seize Constantinople. During the spring of 1390, Bayezid, who distrusted both John V and Manuel II for their open defiance against Ottoman suzerainty, would lend troops to John VII. The Ottoman Sultan thought, by supporting the most junior claimant to the Byzantine throne, that he could gain a more trustworthy and dependent ally in Constantinople. Everything went as planned for Bayezid, as John the Younger would swiftly seize Constantinople, but after only four months of rule, Venetian forces under Manuel II would retake the imperial city, re-establishing the status quo. After seeing that his plans for the Romans had been thwarted, a furious Bayezid would demand both Manuel II and John V join his Ottoman host for his upcoming Anatolian campaign along with a minor Byzantine retinue of cavalry. During the subsequent Ottoman military campaign from 1390 to 1391, the two co-Byzantine emperors would serve as de facto political hostages to the Ottoman Sultan. While Ottoman armies were preoccupied with Anatolia, Emperor John V saw a good opportunity to shore up his defences at home and ordered the strengthening of Constantinople's fortifications, particularly the city's Golden Gate complex. After hearing of this news from the Byzantine capital, an enraged Bayezid I would threaten John V with the blinding of his son, Manuel II, if he did not cease the construction project at once. The reluctant 58-year-old would submit to Bayezid's demands before proceeding to shut himself up in his palace in humiliation. In the first months of 1391, the ailing senior Byzantine emperor would die of natural causes after reigning over what was left of the Byzantine realm for more than 50 years. Upon hearing the news of his father's death, Manuel II would slip out of Ottoman captivity from Bursa and rush back to Constantinople before his nephew John VII could claim the imperial throne. Hearing the news of Manuel's escape from his captivity and his coronation in Constantinople, and feeling robbed of the opportunity to pick a Roman monarch of his choosing, a now even angrier Bayezid put forth new demands upon the new Byzantine emperor. The Sultan of the Ottomans would demand for the construction of a Turkic quarter in Constantinople, in addition to a mosque and Islamic caddy to oversee the new settlement. Finishing off his humiliating list of demands for Manuel II, Bayezid would state to the Byzantine monarch, If you do not accept my orders and do as I command, then shut the gates of your city and govern what lies behind them, for everything beyond the gates belongs to me." A powerless Manuel II would bow down to Bayezid's demands, and three months later would be summoned to the Sultan's camp in the former lands of the Jandarid Beylik to swear loyalty to his new liege lord. Although Ottoman relations with Constantinople seemed stable for the moment, the same could not be said about the situation in the Balkans, as Serbian, Hungarian and Fallakian incursions in the region continued plunging deep into Ottoman territory. Putting his military campaign against Kadi Burhanuddin on pause, Bayezid, along with a recently replenished Ottoman army, would begin the march back to Europe in the last months of 1391. Meanwhile, in Adena, Ottoman Grand Vizier Jandalizade Ali Pasha would coordinate limited retaliatory raiding operations into the lands of Wallachia, Hungary and Bosnia. However, by the turn of the year, Sultan Bayezid I and his main Ottoman host would enter into Europe after a lightning fast forced march, catching the Christian powers of the region off guard. The Ottoman Sultan would begin his European military campaign by first marching on the domains of Vuk Brankovic, the last Serbian nobleman that had yet to submit to Ottoman vassalage. Retracing his father's march during the Kosovo campaign of three years past, would swiftly capture the major Serbian town of Skopje, forcing Brankovic to submit to Ottoman suzerainty. With all of Serbia now under his rule, Bayezid then turned his attention to Mircea of Wallachia. In a blistering campaign, Ottoman forces would reconquer Silistra from the Voivode in addition to the southern half of the Despotate of Debruja. In addition to these conquests, Bayezid would spend the rest of the year ramping up Ottoman raids into Hungary and Bosnia. 
After years of fending off numerous Ottoman invasions into his realm, the Bulgarian Empire under Tsar Ivan Shishman had been reduced to a small collection of lands surrounding the Danube fortress town of Nicopolis and the main capital of Tanovo. Seeking to finally finish off the Bulgarians before they could enter into a potential alliance with Hungary and Wallachia, Bayezid would invade the Tsar's domain during the spring of 1393. Upon hearing the news of invasion, Ivan would abandon his capital at Tarnovo and retreat to the more formidable Nicopolis, the fortress town that Murad I had unsuccessfully besieged back in 1388. This time, the Sultan's eldest son, Suleiman Chelebi, led the Ottoman host. With Tarnovo left leaderless and Ottoman forces now converging on the city, the capital's defences would be left in the leadership of the Patriarch of Bulgaria, Euthymius of Tarnovo. Ultimately, the city could not hold. After three months of withstanding the Ottoman siege, the exhausted defenders of Tarnovo would surrender to Suleiman Celebi, resulting in a mass migration of Turkic settlers into the former Bulgarian capital. With the Bulgarian realm now being reduced to Nicopolis, Ottoman armies would now march on the neighbouring Tsardom of Vidin, ruled by Ivan Shishman's half-brother Ivan Stratsimir. Before sharing the same fate as his fellow Bulgarian monarch, Stratsimir would submit to Ottoman vassalage, even accepting an Ottoman garrison to be stationed in his capital of Vidin. With large swaths of the Balkans now under Ottoman rule, during the winter of 1393, Sultan Bayezid I would call forth his Balkan vassals to meet with him in the town of Ceres. Having serious doubts about the reliability of his Christian subjects' allegiances, the suspicious Ottoman Sultan wished to cement his authority over his vassals to ensure none were conspiring against him. Those who answered the call were Manuel II of the Byzantine Empire, Despot Theodori of Morea, John VII of Salimbria, Konstantin Dejanovic of Felbazd, and lastly Stefan Lazarevic of Moravian Serbia. This call to meet spooked many, as it was rumoured that Bayezid would round up and murder all of his vassal lords in order to centralise his power in the Balkans, just like he had in Anatolia. This rumour would be false, and after a few days of exchanging pledges and promises to the Ottoman Sultan, all of the Christian lords participating in the meeting were free to go back to their own holdings. However, this Ottoman exercise of psychological warfare would be the breaking point for Manuel II, as upon his return to Constantinople, he would suspend his ties with Adena. The Byzantine Emperor hoped that the mighty Theodosian walls of his capital city would deter any future attempt at an Ottoman siege. Upon hearing the news that his Roman vassal was playing hooky with him, Bayezid would begin raiding the outskirts of Constantinople before blockading the Byzantine capital altogether. In addition to directly waging war against Manuel II, Byzantine Thessaly would be quickly conquered by local Ottoman marcher lords, resulting in a territorial expansion which saw the Sultanate expand as far south as the Gulf of Corinth. In addition to the blockade of Constantinople, Bayezid would begin the building of a waterfront fortress on the narrowest point of the Bosporus in order to block maritime traffic from the Black Sea to the Byzantine capital. The construction of the Anadolu Hisoru, or Anatolian castle, and its fast completion in only a matter of months would display the Ottoman Sultan's true desire to become the undisputed ruler of the Romans. However, Bayezid's sudden blockade of one of Christendom's largest cities would have a rippling effect in Europe. As a result of the siege and Manuel II's pleas for European military assistance, King Sigismund of Hungary would call for an anti-Ottoman crusade. Soon after, the popes in Rome and Avignon, who were in the middle of the Western Schism, would proclaim the start of a crusade against Bayezid. As envoys and petitions were sent across Europe for the upcoming crusade, the Sultan of the Ottomans would not deter his choice of blockading the Byzantine capital city. Confident in his abilities as a military general, and coming off of a string of impressive victories in both the Balkans and Anatolia, Bayezid decided to double down and go on the offensive. In our next video on Ottoman history, a massive crusading army with knights from Hungary, Croatia, Bulgaria, Wallachia, France, Burgundy and Germany will bear down upon Ottoman lands. To make sure you do not miss it, alongside any other videos on Turkish history, please subscribe and hit the bell button.
and please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Recently, we have started releasing weekly patron and YouTube member exclusive content. Consider joining their ranks via the link in the description or button under the video to watch these weekly videos, learn about our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our private discord and much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel and we will catch you on the next one.